Good afternoon, tubers. Madam Roy back again. It is 1230 on February 17th of 2017. Dad and I just got back from IHOP. We decided to use another one of those coupons. We had $5 off. They sent me a whole bunch of those through my emails, different emails. So we're trying to make do, uh, use of those. Need to go ahead and reheat up my coffee real quick because uh, I'm starting to feel a little lethargic after that big meal. What is going on, guys? I know it's been a few days. Um, once again, been pretty busy, but on top of that, just haven't really had a heck of a lot to vlog about. And I don't want to put out bad vlogs, so I decide if I don't have anything good to do that day, if I'm just kind of bumming around, then I'm not going to put it out there because then you guys will get a little disappointed in it. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, today, Mom and I are planning on doing our walk tonight, um, hopefully in the mall. I keep trying to vlog there, but unfortunately they play the darn music so loud that <laughs> I'd get a copyright strike immediately. So what I might try to do is um, overlay the music with some of the YouTube safe audio like I've done in the past. I can use stuff like the 1812 Overture, Hepcats, um, whatever I film there, I can just overlay that so I don't have to worry about getting a copyright strike because... My buddy Eric, and this is a uh, Brunhammer, a little shout out to you, Eric, and I did see your post on your copyright strike. He just got one, unfortunately, for one of his more popular videos where he was demonstrating some uh, really nice speakers. And I got to talk a little bit about this. I mean, I know I have in the past, but YouTube has just gotten ridiculous. And they've actually gotten a little bit better on it now. Like, there were a few videos that I did where there was some, like, um, background elevator music. Coincidentally enough, they were literally elevator videos, so it was literally elevator music. <laughs> that um, got some copyright strikes and those have been rescinded. And the thing that gets me is it was just background music. Like you could barely hear of it. There was maybe one instance you could actually make out in that whole video what the song was. And YouTube was able to, I guess, or whoever was listening was able to claim that as their own. And as you guys mostly know, it's, it's almost a, impossible to... Uh, basically fight a copyright strike because you got these big uh, music studios out there. They're constantly, constantly um, trolling YouTube for people that are even using a snippet of one of their songs. So it's really unfortunate, but we got to live in the, I guess, the rules of YouTube, let's say. I'm going to take a little sip of this here. Ah, that is really good. Well, I want to show you guys a few things I'm working on, so I'm going to switch the camera view, and it's I'll be back in just a Everybody seems to request uh, more computer videos. I'll go ahead and show you this one real quick. This is one that I uh, just finished up. This is a Dell Optiplex 330. Um, this is one of the older Optiplexes. I would say this is, dates around 2007, maybe 2008. It originally did have a Windows Vista on it. That's kind of how you can uh, pretty easily date them, but it did come with with a dual, um, oh, I can't even think right now. It came with a DVD burner. I think it's a dual, dual layer. No, I'm sorry. This is a single layer DVD burner. Um, no optical, no um, three and a half inch floppy drive, no memory card reader in this particular one, but does have the front audio ports and two USB 2.0 ports. Go ahead and wake this up. And I did install Windows 10 on here. Uh, it's rocking a Core 2 Duo, pretty decent Core 2 Duo. Not the highest end one, but actually a lot uh, faster than I would have expected from a system of this age. And I do know for a fact that the Core 2 Duo in this is the original processor. Give you guys a little info on the specs here. It's a Core 2 Duo E4600 running at 2.4 gigahertz with 4 gigabytes of memory. Now, normally with a system like this, I would try to max it out to 8 gigabytes of RAM. But let me show you the problem with the Dell Optiplex So I've taken the side cover off and I shimmy these, the SATA cable and the power cables out of the way. You can almost immediately see the problem. That's right, guys. There are only two memory slots in here. Whereas most of the Optiplexes, uh, the Optiplex 360s, the 760s, the 755s all had four uh, DDR2 slots, this system only has two. And unfortunately, this system um, takes a max of two gigabytes per slot. So if you guys come across one of these Dell Optiplex 330s, just be forewarned that you are going to be limited to four gigabytes of RAM, not the eight gigabytes that most of the Dell Optiplexes of this era could handle. Um, it's, not, it's decently featured. It's got four SATA ports. It's got the two up here, which are being taken up, one by the 
uh, hard drive, the other by the optical drive. Uh, this one is a 20 pin um, ATX uh, power uh, connector. I don't think that's a 24. Let's see if I can count. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I, I take that back. It is a 24 pin. Just took a second to count that on there. Um, two more SATA ports right there. Little uh, cobweb there. We can get rid of that real quick. <laughs> it's got an Intel chipset in there. Let's see, this is a NH8280. I know this has got a, a G33 chipset, so I'm pretty sure about that. Um, right here, it's got a, this is a, a ATI Radeon HD 3450 card, decent card. Um, I did have to do some work to it though. The fan needed some lubrication, so I took care of that. And as you can hear, the fan is working nicely. Uh, this computer has one PCI Express X16 slot and then just two regular 32-bit uh, PCI slots. And then over here we have the two terabyte, the massive two terabyte. Um, hard drive. This is one that I got in a lot of a, of a bunch of other hard drives. Most of them were good. I had a few that were um, that bad sectors that I had to destroy, but this one tested just fine. One thing I really did not like about these Dells is the way that they mounted the hard drives. And the reason is, basically they use these little plastic cages here. And there is nothing that's screwed in. Basically you just brace the hard drive against these little um, screw standoffs here. You get four of them, and then you just slide the uh, hard drive right back in there. And unfortunately, they're not in there very tight either. Like if I rattle the case around, you can actually see this hard drive moving around quite a bit. Not one of Dell's better designs. I mean, I get what they were trying to do because this is technically a business class system, and they were trying to build a system that was easy to replace components when, when and if they went bad. But... This, I think, is just an example of poor engineering. What they really needed is to have actual screws here that you could screw this in. Even if you could do that, even if they kept this plastic, that would have helped out tremendously. One other thing I must say I'm not too crazy about with these cases is the way they hold the PC expansion cards in. And I know UXW Bill touched on this with one of the Optiplexes he got from the uh, Ham Radio Fest. But the way it works, basically, is if you look inside here, you have this little hinge here that you push down and that allows you to release this and then allows you to go ahead and change out the cards but unfortunately this is the only thing that is holding this card in is this very cheap flimsy piece of plastic this isn't even metal so that is one thing that i have really really um really upset about dell doing because it just really is not strong enough to handle it especially if you have multiple cards um, since I only have the one video card here, it actually does an okay job, but when you start putting extra expansion cards, like, say you had a modem or another Ethernet card down here, and maybe, um, if you're like me, an old Firewire card so you can use your vintage uh, camcorders, when you have all of those things combined, it really just puts too much stress on this little bracket design, and, uh, they have been known to fail, and fail in big ways, unfortunately. Well, I came across something very interesting at the thrift store today that I know at least a good portion of you would be interested in seeing, um... And it is this. I won't keep you in suspense. This is a 3M standard dictation cassette. This I thought was so cool. And this is by no means a high-end cassette. Matter of fact, more likely than not, I haven't opened it, but it's probably a type 1 cassette. In other words, a ferric oxide. Um, that wasn't the cool part. The cool part is just to see that something like this still exists and is still in brand new sealed condition. Well, you know what? It's not going to be for very long because I am going to open this right now on camera. So let's go ahead and open it. I'm uh, destroying probably 50 to 60 percent of the value by doing this. Come on. This thing's been sealed for so long. <laughs> It's like glue to try to get this thing open. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're getting there. It would help if I actually had fing uh, fingernails, but I just cut them recently. Okay, guess what? We need a knife or something to take care <laughs> of this. I'm back and I got the proper tool. This is just a little uh, tiny box cutter. I'm just going to do a little slit. 
right here on the plastic and then we can just go ahead and peel it away. It is really on there though. You can tell that this was probably sitting in someone's attic or crawl space for quite a few years before it got to me. Well, let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. Once again, 3M, five, uh, what is this, a 542 standard dictation cassette. Um, I'm guessing probably from the early to mid 80s, maybe a little later than that, but let's go ahead and open it up and see if there's any uh, information on there. Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, right off the bat, you could tell it's definitely a Type 1 tape by looking at the little notches on top. It's got one notch on either side. So that tells me right there that it's a Type 1 tape. If it was a Type 2 or chromium tape, it would have a notch and then a little slit next to it. So as, as I thought, because it's just made for dictation, in other words, this is really designed primarily for voice, there's really no need to make it uh, a high-end tape like a chromium or a metal tape. Um... One thing you want to check with cassette tapes is that the uh, rollers are free spinning, and in this case, they are. So I can actually spin that, and you can actually see both sides spinning. Um, one thing that's very interesting with these dictation tapes, and I don't see this with any other tape, there is no blank um, starter reel. In other words, it actually goes right into the, the, the tape. And that's because it is a dictation tape. When you f start recording this, that second you push that record button, you want it to start recording. You really don't want to have any um, any time where you may miss something. Like, say you're a secretary, you go in and you your um, boss wants to get a memo down. Well, you, like I said, you want to hit that record button and immediately have it start recording. Quality. It's a decent build quality. It's got some weight to it. Um, one thing that I like here is that it's the hard plastic uh, window here. Some of the cheaper tapes, they actually just use like a soft plastic film. You could actually push on it and it would actually flex and it would easily break and get into the tape. Um, one other thing that's very important here is this has definitely got uh, a screw design. In other words, you could actually take uh, this cassette apart and replace the tape in it. And I've actually done that before. Um, some of the cheaper ones, they just have it sealed with clips, whereas this is a screwed-on design. Let's go ahead and see if we can get any more information about this. I'm going to look in here and see if there's a date on here. No date or anything, but um, this is interesting. It's a little diagram to show you how to protect your tape once you've recorded onto it. Basically, it shows you that you just go ahead and take a little screwdriver or whatever you have, and pull those tabs out. That's how you protect what's recorded on this tape. Um, <laughs> they call it indexing, and that's because when you're using a dictation machine, they actually have an index mark that, that they can put on the tape to let you go to specific points. And uh, I don't actually own a dictation machine, but it'd be interesting to get one in because I think you guys would find it really fascinating how they used to do uh, dictation versus how it's done now with digital recorders and be honest with you, most um, executives just do their own dictation now. They don't even need the secretaries to do it anymore. Uh, this says it has a limited warranty, which I am absolutely sure has run out by now. Because <laughs> this was probably originally purchased, like I said, 25, maybe 30 years ago. So that is very interesting. Um, I'm not actually going to do a demonstration of this tape because it's not going to sound really any better than a standard Type 1 tape. I just thought you guys might find it interesting to see something like this. I've never actually seen a actual dictation tape before in a thrift store. I have seen tapes that you could kind of tell were leaning towards the dictation or the, the vocal uh, market, but not one that was actually made just for dictation. Very, very cool find indeed. Talk to you guys a little later. Well, that's all I got for you today. I need to spend some time and clean this mess up in my closet. I know, I said I did it all, but I really didn't. I just did the floor, so I kind of told a little fib there. Sorry about that. I'm going to spend the rest of the day doing this, uh, maybe clean a few other things. Um, we are going to go walking tonight, but I'm not going to film because, like I said, there's just way too much uh, sound in there. I don't want to have to deal with it tonight. So I will try to do it in the future. I'm going to get some more uh, background music that I can play. Hopefully the uh, copyright police won't get me on. Hope you enjoyed the vlog today. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.